October 6th. This has been one of the quietest Sabbath day Greensboro has ever known. After long deliberation, it was decided to close the churches, schools, theaters, and all places where people are wont to congregate because of the epidemic of Spanish influenza, which is sweeping the country and the army. Automobiles, too, being banned, the whole town seemed deserted. Hi, I'm Carol Gorsey Hart, continuing the reading of Mary Kelly Watson Smith's 1918 Diaries. We're in October, and she's mentioning more and more the Spanish flu. What's important to remember is she's married to the First Presbyterian Minister and a pretty prominent person. The people she knows are pretty prominent as well, which is good news for us because I am often able to find references to them in newspapers or their photographs. But on the other hand, it really reinforces that we're only seeing one slice of life in Greensboro. As historians, we want to have as complete a picture as possible, so we have to tease out what was happening to other people. It also reminds us that histories change, information we have changes, and the questions that we ask changes. What we think is important to understand changes. I try to imagine a hundred years from now when a future director is doing an exhibit on the pandemic of 2020, what kinds of information are they going to look for? Now they're going to want to tell stories from all parts of life. So we're encouraging people throughout our community to keep journals and diaries and we're going to be collecting those, something that you might consider doing at home. Let's continue our journey now as we learn more of what's going on in Greensboro in October 1918. It was unfortunate for the linen shower, which was depending largely on the pulpits to give out all needed information as to collecting, sorting, laundering, and packing the immense stores of linen so generously given. Among the first were $200 from the White Oak chapter, 225 handkerchiefs from the Mill children, $50 from the Normal girls, a good donation of towels from the barber, and even from the prisoners in the jail. Great news this Sabbath morning. German government clamors for peace while her armies are in disastrous retreat. Austria, in peace note, accepts President Wilson's proposals. Germany is ready to accept his 14 peace conditions at once. But the war is not ended. Meantime, steady flow of men across England. Nothing but unconditional surrender will satisfy America and its president. October 9th. The influenza epidemic continues to rage over the country, especially in the camps, where there is a sad lack of physicians and nurses, many of them being down with it. The naval patrol boat Tampa was sunk on September 20th in the Bristol Channel off the coast of England. 118 men were lost, 10 were officers, 102 enlisted men. The past week has been one of wonderful achievement for our armies. It began with the collapse of Bulgaria, which at once threatened Austria. The armistice asked for was granted. On October 1st, the French troops entered San Quentin, opening a swift gateway eastward for General Folk. In all seven directions, the Allies are pushing forward with undaunted zeal the enemy fleeing and disorganized. October 10th. This morning we were distressed and alarmed by a telegram received by Alf Scales from Brooklyn, so telling of the illness of his son Alfred from pneumonia after influenza. He left at noon and next day wired for Mrs. Scales and Bess as Alf was critically ill. 
We await further news with anxious hearts. Meantime, Edward Latham, an only son, has died of pneumonia at Fort Thomas, Kentucky. His parents are away and little Meg Gordon is at home awaiting the arrival of the body. Mr. Laughlin and others have called. It's really sad and it's interesting how a hundred years later it, it can still break break my heart. Um, and there's more sadness to come, but also some joy. Keep checking back as we explore the stuff of history. <laughs>